As leaders in advancement programs at colleges, universities, and independent schools and other nonprofit organizations, we're challenged today with effecting the transition of leadership from the baby boomers and Generation X to now the millennials. So how are we doing it? How are we addressing this critical need for transition? How might we undertake building the pipeline for increased leadership in our organizations and institutions? Let's start by recognizing that the next 10 years, 75% of our workforce globally will be millennials by 2025. Deloitte has undertaken a series of studies to better understand this group of individuals, and here's some of what they learned. Though they're not ready for leadership roles, they want them anyway. They envision a flattened organizational structure. They definitely want transparency in their leadership roles. They know, they understand, and appreciate what an open and inclusive environment is. They've grown up where gender, race, sexual orientation, and age are all a part of their daily lives. They want their organization to be good citizens that will demonstrate moral integrity and organizational values and have that demonstrated at all levels. Further, though they're not the same, they do share some common themes about organizations and how leadership can best be transformed into creating more innovative and structural changes for the better. They see their leadership as more expansive, less hierarchical. They challenge traditional practices and will disrupt leadership that has become established and some might say entrenched in order for them to inspire others, make a difference, and lead more than with the bottom line in focus. Deloitte's survey found 47% of these individuals indicated that they feel motivated to empower others. Their focus is not on the customary issues of money and recognition. When asked about areas of importance for them in developing their leadership, millennials identified several. Soft skills training with an emphasis on communication and relationship building. They want mentor programs to help them prepare for leadership roles, and they believe that they will find value in shadowing current leaders. They seek collaborative environments with the exchange of ideas and create innovation. They want to share in the decision making as well. They also want to learn more about intergenerational dynamics. They believe that they can strengthen in working together and they clearly want to know and understand the big picture. Further, in Boston College's Center for Work and Family, we find that this generation is the most educated, the most diverse, and the most technologically savvy of any generation heretofore. They're focused on meaningful work and a sense of accomplishment, not necessarily high salaries and high levels of responsibility. Work-life balance for them is extremely strong. Given this background on millennials and leadership, we then learned that from Deloitte study that only 20% of our organizations identified millennial leadership as a segment for developing such skills. Further, only 7% are investing in the organization for millennials by offering coaching, mentoring, dedicating time with senior leaders. Without significant strategies, we may well lose skills and experiences that took years to build. We could easily lose relationships with our alumni, donors, and friends that we believe are so critical to institution success. In our next segment, part two, we will discuss strategies for building the pipeline of millennials and leadership in our advancement programs. Thank you.